All right. Uh, let's go. Look, Scheffler, what else is there to say? Uh, he, and he's only got one green jacket, but he's you just get the feeling he's probably going to have about three or four when it's all said and done. Um, he's trying to be the first player. Uh, Tiger is the only other player to win both the players and the masters in the same year. Uh, that was back in 2001. Uh, but uh, Scheffler's already broken a trend this year, winning back-to-back uh, TPCs. So if anybody can do it this year, I'm sure uh, Scotty could do it. Um, I got I got to say this, and look, we don't like taking four-to-one shots, but this would be the one time all year that I would say, if you want to go out and you just want to put whatever you want to put, you want to put a thousand down, five hundred down, hundred bucks, and just go, I'm going all out on Scheffler. That's all I'm going to do. I, I would say go ahead and do it. I, I agree. I th- I think that's his his game suits Augusta National because he hits the ball really high. He's a great chipper. His putting is better, and he's a good iron player. So he's he's and he's playing well. I think this might be his. I I, I and I've been saying this for a few weeks is that his his wife's still with him, you know, traveling with him. So, but she's. She's two weeks away, and she looks like she's ready to go. So I'm thinking that he's going to have a little baby crying the next time he's going to play a tournament. So this is a this is a big one for him. Jared, I think if nothing else, like Scheffler is going to be in the mix on Sunday. So if you want to make a bet and just have a, a Sunday sweat, <laughs> I think Scheffler's a pretty safe bet. You know, it's not not for me at plus four fifty, but I do think if you're just looking to have a little fun on, on Master Sunday, Scheffler is a good way to go. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you if you want to be sure that you're going to be there on Sunday, there's no yeah. player that you'd rather have the wager on yeah. than Scheffler. Okay, so then you've got McElroy and Rom are next, and Rom's already got his green jacket, and he's been okay on the live tour. Everything's been in the top ten, but on the live tour, you would expect more from John Rom. Yeah. But look, defending back at Augusta or any major is just a very tall task, and he's, he's made all seven of his cuts. Um, I just, I just don't see that happening. I think that would be a big ask. Uh, so out of those two, I would actually take Rory. I know he has, he's not on top of his game, even though last week he seems to feel he's a little bit better than you know he's been before. He does have seven top tens at Augusta. He was runner up just a couple of years ago. And interesting is that he's, he's played the week before the Masters five times, and over the last four or six times over the last four, he has improved each time. So matter of fact, the last time he played the week before the masters, he was runner up. So he, to all, to improve on that trend, he'd have to win this week. So, and he's trying to do anything different to, 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 to change up uh, his strategy of winning at Augusta, because whatever has, uh, whatever he's worked on before just has not worked. But let's also keep in mind, he's missed two of his last three cuts at Augusta Jan. That's pretty incredible, but everybody puts too much pressure on him. And But I, I actually think he's playing a little better. You know, he, he's, he's trying to just say, oh, I'm getting my driver more in play because he'll hit one just off the world. If he does it on the right holes, you, you know, you might get it. You might be, a, be lucky. I, I think he's due. You know, I mean, he's he played better last week. And, you know, if you look at the trends, it seems like people that win didn't, you know, kind of were around the mix, you know, the week before or the last couple of weeks, but didn't like wear themselves out being coming down the stretch, having to make a shot to win. Cause that, that'll wear you out too. You know, you put everything into that and he didn't do that. He just kind of looked like he was trying, but not, you know, not, he was looking at his game for this week. So I, I actually think he probably this will be one of his chances he has. It depends on how he gets off, to, what start he gets oh, off yeah. to. He's not good at if he if he gets off to a bad start the first few holes, and like your other trend that was interesting is that if you if you're leading and if you're playing early, so if the the first round whoever's got the morning tea times is going to have a huge advantage. Jared, who would you take, Ram or McElroy? So it'd be Rom for me. Rom, Rom would be my favorite bat among these top three guys. I, I think Rom has a better chance to win than Rory. And I, I don't think Scheffler has a more than twice the chance of winning as Rom. Like, it's almost three Rahm times could, as much. 
No, exactly. So I don't think that's right. The one, one thing I'll say about Rory is he gained 7.4 strokes on approach last week at Valero. That was his best approach tournament since May of 2019. <gasps> wow. So his, his irons were awesome last week, and we know the driver is going to be good. Um, so I, I think Rory has a real shot. I think he has a better shot than I thought he was going to, you know, a, a few weeks ago. I think he's trending in the right direction. All right. And then uh, we move on. We've got your top pick. Matter of fact, your top two picks are here, uh, and that is Shoffle and Matsuyama. Shoffle 14 to 1, Matsuyama 20 to 1. Uh, by the way, Kepka is also 20 to 1. My pick last year, speaking of choking in the final round, uh, Brooks Kepka letting John Rom pass him for the win. Uh, so out of those three, though, again, Jared, you have two of those as your top plays. Matsuyama, I think, is, is a given. You have to take Matsuyama this week. I, I mean, I'm taking him big this week. I think he's uh, he's in line uh, like never before for another green jacket and maybe even more deserving because, again, those two years with no crowd one year and limited crowd the next, that's just not the same. It's just not because you just yeah. mentioned it, Jan, the pressure, the crowds. You just don't feel that when, when there's not a crowd, when the crowd isn't around. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be nice to see Hideki possibly get a green jacket without, um, uh, I mean, with the crowd and proving that he could do it there. But anyway, um, Shoffle, on the other hand, J Jared, uh, I don't know. You know how you know how we've been talking about Shoffle <laughs> in oh, yeah. big spots. Yeah. Uh, this is the biggest yeah. spot of all, and I, I, just, I just can't see it. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with Xander, um, and I want to go back to this trend we talked about last year, and it ended up hitting for us, so... It's now nine of the last 12 Masters winners checked all three of these boxes heading into the year they won. They had at least one previous top 20 at the Masters. So as we've talked about, you know, of course, history is important here. They were averaging at least 1.9 strokes gain total per round in the three months prior to their win. And they were averaging at least 1.4 strokes gain T to green in the three months prior to their win. So again, they're just, they're guys that have good course history and are playing well. Nine of the last 12 winners checked all three of those boxes. Last year, there were four guys coming into the event that checked all four of those. It was Scheffler, Morikawa, Jason Day, and John Rahm who ended up winning. So that, you know, that this trend hit again last year. This year, there are only two players that check all three of these boxes. Now, it's tricky because we don't have the stats for a live guy. So this does not include John Rahm, Brooks Kepka, Cam Smith, Dustin Johnson. So that does make it a bit trickier. But there's only two PGA Tour guys that check all three of those boxes. One is Scotty Scheffler. The other one is Xander Shoffley. So I'm going to kind of follow this trend and take a shot on Xander. I know he hasn't won in a while, but the guy has he, – he's won seven times on the PGA Tour. So it's not like he doesn't know how to win. He's been good in majors. If you look at all majors over the last three years, Xander Shoffley is 11th in strokes gain total. Then he's also fifth in course history at Augusta. So he's been good here. So um, – I feel very confident he's going to be in the mix on Sunday. Whether he can actually close it and, and win it is a question, but I think he's going to be in the mix. I don't know, Jan. I think for Shoffley to win an event like this, especially the Masters, the way he's playing, that he hasn't won in two and a half years, and he's already struggled this year a couple of times with the chance to win, I think he's going to have to be in one of those positions where he's in second place and the, and the player who's in first, not named Scotty Scheffler, is the one that does what Brooks Kepka did last year and just folds and he takes advantage of that. I think that's how Shoffley can win this event. I can't see Shoffley winning this event with the lead on Sunday. No, and I totally agree because look what he did at the players. I mean, the thing is he hit a couple of shots at the players that right when he's coming down the stretch on the back nine, I want to say I think it was like 12, and 12 or 13, that he hit it sideways and, you know, you just can't do that. And, you know, sometimes his swing isn't there and you, you wonder where that came from and obviously the pressure. And he's got an amazing short game. I mean, when he did it a couple of times, he, he, he made these incredible, you know, saves and he's and he hangs in there when that happens. I mean, if I did that, I'd freak out. And But he is really can struggle. It can really hang in there. But... I don't know if you can do it at the Masters. It's like what you said. He he could be hanging around there doing it without the most pressure, and then somebody fold, and then he's left with it. But he's he's not. I don't think his game is right now is good enough. It, it, after watching some of the shots he hit, 
you know, he hit a couple of really crooked shots, and you just can't do that at the Masters coming down the stretch. One thing's for sure is if he's able to win on his own, uh, then it could be scary for everybody else in, on tour because then uh, he has no more barriers uh, mentally. And uh, his game is there. It's just he's just not able to mentally put it together for whatever reason. But he's going to win again. The question is, when he wins again, can he do it with the biggest of stages or on the biggest of stages? Matsuyama, though, again, Jared, I mean, I think this is the perfect setup for, for Hideki this week. Yeah. Uh, he's off to such a great start. He's already got a green jacket, which should help. Um, he's made 11 of 12 cuts here. Eight of those are top 20s. Um, his last four years, all in the top 20, uh, including the win, with a combined 18 under par. So yeah, he's and he's playing great. Um, and 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 I even noticed one of the trends. I forget. I'm one of the stats. I forget what it was, but it was a key stat. And he was on top. I forget. It's something to do with. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember what it was, but I know it was a significant stat. I know he's not the po most powerful player on tour, but uh, his game is just rock solid right now. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at the top 10 lists that we looked at earlier in the show. He's seventh in course history over you know the last four years we're looking at. He is fourth in strokes gain, T to green per round this year. And he's really been even better lately. I mean, you look at his last, what is it, four results? Yeah, since he won the Genesis, he wins the Genesis. 12th at API, 6th at the players, 7th at Bolero. Um, I mean, only one or two guys I think are playing better than Hideki right now. And he has the awesome course history here. It's almost one of those situations where Hideki, like he's, he seems so obvious that like we know golf is crazy that he's, he's probably going to struggle this, this weekend. Cause it just doesn't make any sense that he would struggle, but he just, he just checks too many boxes for me to not be on him this week. Well, the thing is he hits really high irons. And like I said, if the greens get firm, that's a huge advantage. And he let he knows the golf course, and, and and he's one of those people. I think he's like a Scheffler. He's going to be there in the top ten in the end. He's he's really got a, a great attitude. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't lose it very often. You know, I mean, it's that mentality. And he used to not be that good a chipper, but he's become really good around the short game and his short game now. And so I would have said in the past that he didn't have a good enough short game like Hovland used to. But he's really improved his chipping, and his putting was so good last week. I was so impressed. Well, I just found that stat, and that's exactly what it is. It's strokes gained around the green. Hideki Matsuyama is number one on the PGA Tour right now this year. Wow. Um, the, and the only other big name on that list in the top uh, seven is Scheffler, of course. But Schaffle is eighth on that list. And the funny thing is, besides Jason Day at nine, you got to go all the way down to wow, uh, Tommy Fleetwood at twenty-five to find another big name. So very strange that. Why do you think that is, Jan? Why why do I see players like Roger Sloan and <laughs> Chez Reevy, uh Josh Teeter, S. H. Kim? <laughs> Players like that that do really well around the green, and yet it doesn't really impact their overall game. Well, it's because they, you know, they they are really good chippers, and if they weren't, they probably wouldn't even be on tour. <laughs> they have, they've point. got brilliant short games, um, you know, like a Russell Henley. I mean, those he's there every week because he's got, you know, that short game can save you. Now, a lot of that they say is because they can control where they miss it which is what I've always said, that, that gives you easier chip shots. But I've seen Xander make some amazing, amazing um, recovery shots. And so he's got great imagination, which makes it good for him at this tournament, at, you know, at the Masters. And uh, because he can imagine and he can pull out some amazing shots. I'm, I'm always impressed with his imagination. I just don't think they have the game from T to green to get them to the next level at this stage. They need to probably work on his swing a little more. Okay. Uh, I, I know from a, from a stats perspective, just real quick, like strokes gain around the green is easily the least correlated to, to success. You know, approach and putting are easily the two most important. Then off the tee is way more important than around the green. So it's just, I, I think if, if you need to be good at, or, at around the green game, you're, you're probably missing too many greens and you're not you know competing to win anyways. Right. You, you have to have it, but you can't be your strength. It yep. can't be the strength of your game. 
Okay, and, and Kepka has two runner-up finishes at the Masters. He's sitting there at twenty to one. Uh, yeah, I, he's just not playing as good though as he was last year heading into the Masters, which is why I just I'm not looking at him the same way. And by the way, back to your point, Jared, I, I do think that I, I wouldn't say that I think Hideki is almost too obvious because he is twenty to one. I think if he was down by Shoffley, I think yeah. that we could say that. 14 to 1, 12 to 1, but 20 to 1 is still, you know, showing me that, yeah, it's where he should be, kind of, you know, so. I think it's where, I think it's where it should be, I think, well, what, when he won, when he won Genesis, he was like 60 to 1, so his odds have dropped quite a bit. Sure. But I think as they should have, because he is playing so well, he has the course history. Um, just, just on Brooks, real quick, like, he was a guy I thought I was going to bet this week as of, like, five days ago. Okay. But he shot, he was plus 10 at Jarrell over the weekend. He went plus five, plus five, the final two rounds. He's he's like, he's changing his putter. He's been messing with his putter, which is, is weird. He's been struggling putting on live. So um, yeah, he just, and this might sound stupid by Monday because he might come out and win because he's so good at, at majors, but um, he, he, he doesn't seem to be in a spot right now where, he, where he's ready to win a Masters. I agree. I mean, last year he, he blew up because he lost his, you know, he lost his cool. And again, because you're under pressure, he got so frustrated with Cantley because Cantley was slow playing the group ahead. And he was getting so frustrated, whereas you could see John Rahm was, he was running, going to the bathroom. He was cleaning his clubs because when he'd stand there and wait, he was clearly not letting it upset him. And Brooks was getting really upset. And again, that's because the pressure, he probably hadn't slept in a week. And so it, it it got to him, and you could see John just, you know, was just did something, whatever it was going to take to keep him away from the fact that Cantley was slow playing. And so that's when you can tell the pressure's getting to you. You know, I, I think we talked about this in the beginning of, in the beginning of the year with Jan because you took Matsuyama on your fantasy team, and we talked about how uh, he how, how, how uh, disappointing his play had been uh, for a while. Uh, because this is the player that we remember. This is the player that we expect Matsuyama to be. We expect him to be 20 to one to win the masters. Um, uh, but of course, Jared brings up a good point that in the beginning of the year at all these big events, he was 50 and 60 to one because that's, that, that was the results of his game over the last couple of years. So now the question is, is, uh, is he now ready to kind of, you know, put up or shut up time because yeah, he's got to win, but, you know, everybody can win on the PGA Tour. Just look at Malnati. Uh, but uh, can he go back and, and, and win another major and get back to being the player that we believe he can be? So that's the question. All right. And another one of those players in that mix is Jordan Spieth. He's 25 to 1. And uh, Spieth. He's only 25 to 1 is the yeah. way he's played. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jordan is actually my top pick. And, and look, uh, Scheffler. Like I said, I'm probably going to take him in my one and done since I still have him. But at four to one, uh, yeah, I'm not one of those people that has uh, 500 bucks or a thousand dollars to throw around. If I did, <laughs> I'd put it on Scheffler. But Spieth, uh, I think the odds are, are solid. We know how good he can play here. He's got six top fives in ten appearances, and um, his game is uh, finally looking like last week that it's 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 getting going where it needs to be to come into Augusta feeling confident again. And that's why I think he's a pretty good play again this week, Jared. Yeah, so Spieth's interesting. He obviously has the awesome course history. If you look, if you look back though, every year he's, you know, top 10 or, or one at the masters, he's been playing really well coming into that event. And then all the times he's disappointed. I mean, you know, he missed the cut in 2022. He finished 46th in 2020 and all, all those instances, he was he was struggling coming into the event. So he, he's been kind of predictable. The one thing I'll say about Spieth is he's been disappointing all season, but he had the 10th at Valero last week. He gained 9.1 strokes ball striking. That's off the tee plus approach. That was his best ball striking performance since May of 2022. So he's another guy kind of like Rory who um, they've been disappointing for most of the year. But, you know, last week you know, maybe they, they found something. Um, so I, I think Spieth has a shot. You know, he, he's one of the – 10 to 15 guys I'd say has a, has a chance to win um, just because of really because of the course history, how many strong finishes he's had here. Well, the thing with, with Jordan is that the two weeks ago um, the, he 
in uh, Houston, no, San Antonio. He, his coach was there all week and, and he didn't, he practiced, you know, at home in Dallas and then um, came out last week and then got off to a really bad start. And that was, that was going to be my indication when he just hit it, looked like he was going to miss the cut. I mean, he hit it horrible. And then he made a one and then, a, and then an eagle or a birdie. And that just kicked him back off because, you know, he's one of those people that he, 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 when he's confident or, or happy, it seems like he can do anything because his short game is, is just brilliant. I mean, he's like a, he's even better than, than Xander. And I think Xander is probably one of the best and he can get up and down from anywhere. And as soon as you think he's going to have, you know, play really well. And then he will shoot a, a, a shot from anywhere. That's just horrible. And you wonder how he can, but he's been working really hard on his long game. So I would expect that he'll surprise everybody. He's got a really good, you know, he loves the feel of that golf course. He loves that his two little kids come out on Wednesday and he, he gets really into it. And he's, um, his little son, you know, loves to get dressed up in his little white uniform on Wednesday. And so does Rory's <laughs> little daughter, Poppy. She cannot wait to have that uniform on and run around with the other kids. And so maybe that break from the stress of it all is is something that's going to be good for them both. Yeah, the only thing about Jordan and Rory that's scary right now is is that they've had the holes that they've just blown up at. And you just can't do that, as you mentioned, Jan, here. And so that's the thing that just worries you the most. Uh, it's going to be what's going to worry me the most about taking Jordan this week uh, is whether or not he's going to have just one of those rounds, one of those nine holes runs where he just completely loses his game and can't recover from it. Um, I'm going to pop up the picks. So there they are. Th those are Jared's picks. He's got three. We've already been through two. Those are my five. We've been through one. So let's continue. You got Neiman at 28. You got Ludwig at 30. Uh, you've got Hovland, Fitzpatrick at 35. DeChambeau is also 35. So uh, now Neiman, uh, he, the thing that's interesting there is his first four, uh, three appearances, 19 over par. Um, last year, he was two under par, finished 16th. So he has been getting better each time he's played here, and he's had a nice season. But his odds have dropped all the way to 20, 28 to 1. We told everybody early on to take him when he was about 50. Hopefully you got him then. Uh, that's what worries me a little bit. 28, he's kind of with the big boys now. We haven't really seen him yep. with the big boys this year. Uh, Ludwig, it's his first major. I just think that's asking way too much for him. Though you would think it would be a nice story to see him contend. Fitzpatrick. I don't know what's up with Fitzpatrick's game. He's just too inconsistent right now, even though he's made eight out of nine cuts. He was 10th last year, one of only two top 10s he's had at Augusta. And Hovland, what is he doing, Jan? Everybody's criticizing Victor Hovland just when he just, you know, peaked last year. He decides, ah, it's not good enough. I, I just, I don't like the way I'm, I don't like the, the feel of when I hit the ball. I just don't like that feel. I know it's effective, but I just don't like the feel of it. So I have to, I'm going to go back to when it was, when I liked it, when it was the feel was it. And I got to try to make the feel good and the, the result good at the same time. These players just drive you crazy when you think about stuff like this. <laughs> well, I understand what he was thinking, but to go backwards when he was actually making improvements in his golf swing, because he did have some unusual things in his swing. And the way he was fixing them, I liked the way he was fixing them. So then to say, oh, I don't like that anymore, I'm going to go back to hitting it further. And when you do that, you know, you lose a lot of control. I mean, his iron play coming, you think of him at the Tour Championship was brilliant. Yep. And, and he, he had this new little cutoffs, uh, you know, action coming through the ball and it kept the blade square. And so the ball was just on a dart. And then he decided, oh, no, I think I want to go back to hitting it longer. And, and you just wonder what they're thinking. I mean, he worked so hard on his short game last year. He got, you know, new coaches. They taught him bunker shots. They taught him a whole bunch of stuff he didn't have. And then why you wouldn't stick to that? Now, he is a, he is a late bloomer. You think about it. He doesn't really get off to a good start on any of his seasons. Um, so, you know, the fact that I don't know whether it's because he lives in Oklahoma, I don't but. I'm, I would have expected him to have turned it around by now, but when you make changes, you know how that goes. And um, I'm I'm so I'm so disappointed that he changed the golf swing he had. I I, I liked it. Now with Neiman, I, I like him. I, I when you picked when said pick two top fifties at the time he was a fifty to one, 
And I liked his chances because I watched him win the Australian Open. And coming down, when he had to win in, in the in the playoff, he he really performed. I mean, he hit some amazing shots in the playoff uh, to beat Hiroshima. And so I was expecting big things from him, even though he hasn't had a great, he's had enough. I think the, the part that's going to, that's really helped him is that he's played around the world and you have so many different kinds of golf courses and grasses. And I think that's helped his game. Whereas when you play in America, everything is, is perfect and, you know, everything is manicured. And so you, you kind of get a little spoiled, but when you get to the masters, now he gets to come be at a real tournament, you know, after being in the live tour. And I think he's, I think he's got something to prove. You know, he's going to get to play in the major, the in the the world, the British Open as well, or the Open Championship. So he's, I don't know if he gets to play in the PGA. I think he does, but I know that he's going to get to play the US Open as well. So I'm expecting big things from him. Who do you like in that group, Jared? Yeah, it'd be Neiman for me. Um, he has just been by far the best player on live so far this year. Um, he also has that win at Riviera, which I think is the best crossover course with Augusta. You look at a lot of guys just play well at both Augusta and Riviera. So I think that's good news for Neiman. Uh, bent grass greens are his best putting surface. These are bent grass greens at Augusta. So there's a lot of um, things to like about him this week. And he does, you know, he does have experience now. He's played this event four times and he's improved every, every time, uh, culminating with a 16th place finish last year so i i just i don't think the other guys that we just talked about are really live to win this thing i think neiman i think neiman has a chance okay and now we go to the 40 to 1 group you got finau cantley dustin johnson who's got a green jacket zalatoris and wyndham clark so look uh one of my picks is it uh, two of my picks are in this group um and that will be finau and wyndham clark and I know, I know he has never played here before, and I get all that. But I've seen enough trends broken this year that I'm not going to worry about that, uh, including UConn winning back-to-back titles for the first time uh, in, like, 25 years in college basketball. So uh, trend, <laughs> trends have been broken this year. Um, and, and, I, and look, Wyndham Clark starts off at 28-1. to 1. I was back to being that number again. 40 to what? What is he doing at 40 to – he has no back issues anymore. He's already told everybody it's fine now. What, do you don't believe him? I do. So anyway, Wyndham Clark, I know he hasn't won there before, but who cares? Um, Zalatoris, you have to be concerned with his game the last couple of outings. That's the only reason why I, I can't take him this week. And But Finau, you know, I get the feeling Finau, out of all the majors, this could be the one he wins. He's had good success here before. I believe he's never missed a cut, six for six. He has three top tens, one top five. Um, and he also is coming in off of that second at Houston, which should get his confidence going. So out of that group, uh, Jan, um, I've got Fino and Clark in my list this week. Uh, who do you like in that in that group? Well, I love Tony Finau's golf swing. He hits it again. He's one of those people that hits it really high. Uh, and uh, the only thing my, my concern is that he's a bit weak with the putter. Um, he's everything else about his game. I like, I don't know if he can handle the pressure as much. He's a very sweet, very nice guy. And, and, uh, it, it, it's a lot of pressure. If he can do it come at the end, I think he's got a good shot. Wyndham Clark, he wants it. He wants it. And, you know, up until this year, his putting was always the weakest part of his game. He spent the whole winter fixing his putting. So now he's actually almost extra confident with his putting, which is great. He already has a great game, but Tony Finau hits it so high. Again, I, I keep saying that is such a huge advantage. If Unless it rains, it's a huge advantage of the Masters, and he drives it so well. Out of all the top players, big-name players, who does not hit it high enough, do you think, that, you know, that would turn you off to taking him this week? Well, I think, uh, I, I think someone like... Um, well, Fitzpatrick, and as much as I think, you know, I took him and think he's going to do better, um, the, the the English people don't hit it as high. But then you some you see someone like a Lud, Ludwig, even though he hasn't played there much, he hits the ball really high. So I think that's a huge advantage. Um, so Fitzpatrick is the only one that you can think of that really doesn't hit the ball high enough to, to, to win there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I think 
I mean, he's gotten better, but it's not as high. I don't think it's high enough. Uh, Jared, who do you like in that grouping? So I, I talked about not really liking the previous group. I like this group quite a bit. I think Finau, Dustin Johnson, Zal Torres, and Wyndham Clark all have a chance to win. Um, yeah, you said it about Wyndham Greg. I mean, the only thing not to like about him is the fact that he's never played here before and we haven't had uh, a winner in his first time here since, what was it, 1979, I think is, is the year that Fuzzy Zeller did it. Um, other than that, I mean, this course should be awesome for Wyndham Clark. He hits it long. He has a good short game. As Jan said, he's become a really good putter. So I like him. And then, yeah, I, I like the Finau play, Greg. He is hitting it really as well as anyone. It's just been the putter that's held him back so far. He's had good putting performances on these greens for whatever reason. So if he can you know, find that again this weekend, I definitely think he can win. All right. Uh, 45 to one. You got Fleetwood, JT, and Cameron Smith. JT's game was so hot early on. It's kind of cooled off just a little bit. Uh, but you do wonder uh, whether or not this is the week that he puts it all together. He has made seven of eight cuts, but only one top five at Augusta. Missed a cut last year for the first time. Uh, Tommy at 45 to one. He, it's a player that definitely has had a hard time closing things out. He's made six to seven cuts, just one top 15. He ain't closing out Augusta, that's for sure. Uh, he's have to hope that uh, uh, somebody blows the lead if he's in contention. And Cameron Smith would be the one. His odds keep growing. And uh, the, 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 the more they grow, the, the, the better I feel about just throwing a few bucks on him because – hey, maybe he was just food poisoning and now it's over with and he's back to being the guy that uh, finished second at Liv a couple of weeks ago uh, because we know he'd probably be about 25 to 1 if it wasn't for the f- food poisoning uh, last week uh, because this is a, an event, Jan, that Cameron Smith might just win at some point. He loves the golf course, and he's got he's he's got the best short game of anybody. He's I've seen I've never seen him, anyone that can hit those little wedge shots where they look like you've, they've bladed them and they just stop on a dime and things like that. That that you have to do with Augusta. If you get yourself in trouble, you can either have to hit a really really high one or something with a lot of spin. He's he's chipping. Him and Jason Day are the best chippers I've ever seen on different grasses on you you know on different hills and you got to remember how many hills you're you're going with so when you get something against the grain these guys know how to shallow it out and it's just it's a it's a knack yeah uh jared cam smith has played here uh seven times i believe he's never missed a cut (laughs) and he has four top tens three top fives and a runner-up and it makes sense it should be a good golf course for him right because you can be a little wild off the tee here, which is his problem from time to time, but you can get away with that here. He's a good iron player. He's, as Jan said, an awesome around the green player. So it makes sense. Justin Thomas, how about him parting ways with uh, Bones? I know. Was, you know surpri- the, the timing of it is, is most surprising, like, you know, two weeks before the Masters. So that's what has me off him is I just, I don't know what's going on there. I don't, I don't even know who his new caddy is. Do we know yet? No, I mean, and they've, they've kept it very quiet because I've been trying to find out why. And uh, I thought maybe because Bones was getting, you know, a bigger contract with NBC or whether it that Justin didn't like the fact that he couldn't practice with him all the time, one way or the other, because he was doing part time TV. And, you know, I mean, Bones got the job because Phil got it for him when he when he left to go to live because he didn't know how much he was going to play. And it's turned out to be quite successful for Bones. And I don't know that, I noticed when I was at Valspar and JT was there with his dad and practicing and Bones was not there. And Bones was off preparing for a TV event. And so I don't know whether that was what did it. I mean, I, I've been trying to find out and I can't. <laughs> if they've kept it very quiet, they've been very you know classy about it, but they haven't said, well, I just want more time with a caddy that's devoted to me or or bones once it was it's Makes been sense. very interesting that nothing's been said about it all right next group we get to the 50 to ones you got the gala morikawa cameron young uh then at 55 hatton henley and homa we talked about homa and hatton not having good resumes here so cross them off uh henley is he a major winner doubtful um uh, his resume here is okay. Six out of seven cuts made and fourth last year, which was by far his best finish. Cam Young, 
as we mentioned before, he only has uh, the two KFT wins. He does not have a PGA Tour win yet. So uh, he'd be in Larry Mai's company if he won this week. Uh, he was seventh, though, last year. In his second appearance, uh, he made up 16 strokes after missing the cut uh, in 2022 at 10 over par. So that's promising. But his game was better at that time last year. Uh, Morikawa. Uh, have you finally given up, by the way, on Morikawa, Jared, uh, for now? Uh, he's... Huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean the the fact that he's fifty to one and I'm not betting him should yeah, right? something because yeah. that's insane. Like Morikawa at fifty and Homa at fifty five. Yeah, like I don't, like those are insane numbers on those two guys. But I'm trying to be disciplined and not bet them just because. Mor- and it, Morikawa even has the course history here. He's he got some high finishes here, but yeah. hit. I never thought I'd see him hit his irons as poorly as he has over the last month because that's always been the strength of his game. So I, I'm being disciplined, not betting Morikawa. And then Homa's playing a bit better than Colin is, but I don't think Max is playing great, and he just doesn't have the course history here. And your, your the pick that you do have is, is your last pick. You have three picks, and that's the Gala. Now, he's only played once. That was last year. It was very strong. He finished ninth at five under par. He, does have, he only has, of course, one pro win. That was the PGA win last year. But, uh, yeah, you, you do get the feeling that uh, after what you saw last year that yeah, maybe this is a good course for him. Yeah, I think it's a course he's going to like. I think I, I've said on this show a few times that he that, that Sahith kind of reminds me of Jordan Spieth. I think they play similar games. They're just super creative in their shot making. You know? Sahith can work it both ways. He's really good around the green. So I do think Augusta will end up being a really nice course for him. I think there's a good chance he does win a Masters at some point in his career. And he, he's just playing well coming into this one. Sahith is sixth in strokes gain total over the last three months in this field. And he is seventh in this field off the tee over the last three months. And that, you know, early in his career was, was his weak spot. He'd get wild off the tee and he still had some wild misses. I know at the players he was in the mix cause I, I had a bet on him and he hit a really poor drive on one of the par fives that sort of took him out of it. So that's the one concern. But again, at, at Augusta, you can get away with some of those wild drives as we've seen, you know, speeds do when he's won and he's, he's played well. So I just think, um, so hits the guy I'm probably going to be betting at the Masters quite a bit uh, throughout his career. Yeah, the thing, though, is, uh, like we said, with the pressure. Can he handle the pressure if he's in contention on Sunday? We will see. But you're getting 50-1, to 1, so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's where you can be okay with uh, not having to worry too much about whether it play. Big difference between worrying about the gal at 50-1 to 1 and Shoffley at 14-1. to 1. That's a big difference. Um, yep. Okay, so Jan, now we're getting to fifty to one category, uh, territory. Uh, are any of these players that we've just mentioned, any of them, on your list of players that you would take at over fifty to one? Absolutely, I'd take Sahith every time. Uh, number one, he hits the ball really high, uh, and, and he actually has played there more. He won the junior there when he was like thirteen. Yeah, there you uh, go. The Check junior masters. So Jared's um, happy. Think- oh yeah. <laughs> I think that, you know, I mean, you've, you've played there enough and he's a big enough name that he's played enough there to, to know the course. Uh, I actually think that that he's he's an advantage because he does have a short good, a good short game and he's a great putter. I mean, I really like his putting. So coming down the stretch, he's the type that could win, but especially as far as he hits it. So if he can get off to a good start. Uh, you think of some of those first few holes, that, that's a huge advantage. And so... I actually think out of all of those, he's got the best chance of the 50 to ones. He, he, him and Neiman were my two 50 to ones, and then Neiman's already gone back down. Yeah. All right. Uh, now let's, uh, we've got 10 minutes left, so let's kind of run through these. Um, next up, we've got a group here that includes major winners, Lowry, Harmon, Day, Reed, Scott. That's between 60 and 70 to one. Out of that group that we're just looking at right now, I have one player on my list. Do you know who that is, Jared? I'm gonna guess Shane Lowry. How did you know? There you go. I think he's a good. I think he's a good bet. There you go. <laughs> Out of all those players, he got it. See, he he's knows me. Bet. Yeah, Shane Lowry. I like him this week. His, his the, the stats team to match up uh, well here. He's only had four top twenty fives out of eight. That's nothing special. He was third a couple years ago. But this is what I also like. In his first four appearances at Augusta, he was twenty seven over par. In his last four appearances at Augusta, experience eleven under par. 
Um, and he's now entering his ninth appearance, which is just about what we talked about as well. So, yeah, does Shane Lowry have an, a green jacket in his future? Uh, if he does, this would be a year that maybe he'd be able to do that. Um, I don't have any of the uh, these other players, but we did talk about Harmon. I'm intrigued by Harmon, but probably not going to take him. I don't like the way Jason Day's game is or Adam Scott's game. And Patrick Reed is not having a great year. Corey Connors has got a good history here. He has a few top tens at Augusta. Um, but, uh, you know, and Siwoo Kim could be interesting because he always, you know, makes a name for himself in some of these big events. But, um, uh, Jan, uh, what do you think about this group? Well, I think, uh, Lowry is such a good driver. I mean, he's, as far as, uh, he doesn't miss many fairways. I, wa- I remember watching him play in, um, a couple of years ago and he, I think he hit every fairway and, and, and you know, the guys these days that doesn't happen very often. I mean, he really drove it well. He's already got a major. So that part is, and he's comfortable. He's like you said, he's improved. He's every week he's getting better at the masters. And so I think he's comfortable with where he is as far as, um, you know, and being one of the top players. So he's got a chance. I still like Jason a little bit because of his short game, but Adam Scott has something about, the masters that does it for him he loves this golf tournament it's his next to this one and uh, riviera his two favorite tournaments all around the world and the only problem i have with that is that he's not a great putter you know under pressure he misses those four footers if he was a good putter i would say every single time go with adam scott because he's another high ball hitter yeah, Adam, unfortunately, uh, strangely enough, has not played well at Augusta recently. He doesn't have a top 15 in his last five appearances. And in his last wow. three appearances at Augusta, his scoring is 30 over par. Oh, wow. So he's made 20 of 22 cuts at Augusta. But recently, it's not been all that great. Do you... uh? Besides Lowry, anybody else here, uh, Jared? By the way, Siwoo's made six of seven cuts here, but uh, any anybody else here? Yeah, so I expect Siwoo and Connors to play well. I don't think they can win, but they could be like top ten bets. Okay. Um, I think I think Patrick Reed is kind of flying under the radar. He's playing well enough uh, on Live, and you know he came fourth here last year. Obviously, he has the win back in 2018. He also came 10th in 2020, 8th in 2021. So he has a, you know, a really good history here. I think he's playing well enough. I think 71, he's worth a shot. I think Reed and Lowry are the two guys from that group that I'd, I'd give the best chance to actually win. All right. And as far as all the other long shots, and of course that includes big names, uh, you know, Garcia uh, is 110 to one. As we mentioned, he won the masters back in 2017 playoff loss last week. Uh, he has a win this year on live, right? He has a win on live this year. Yeah. No, no, he's lost in the playoffs twice. Oh, he's lost in the playoffs twice. Okay, well, how about that? Um, also, uh, let's see, other big names. Obviously, Tiger, he's a big name, uh, five-time <laughs> champ, uh, but expecting him to win this year, it's, it, was, it would probably be equivalent to when Jack won uh, because uh, he's just not on top of it. Nobody even knows if he's going to last uh, four rounds, let alone win with the back issue, but um, the the players that I I wanted to just bring out that I would definitely throw a couple of bucks in long shot wise. And I, and he's my last pick and I know he's not having a good year. This has not been a good year for Justin Rose, but Justin Rose, uh, if he's going to win another match uh, major, I just think this is it. And I still think he can win it because we've seen older players win at Augusta and compete. And I think at some point, uh, maybe it's next year, the year after, when his game is better. But still, uh, why not? He's made 16 of 18 cuts, three top fives, two runner-ups. He was the playoff loser to Garcia in 2017. So at 130 to 1, I'll make him my final pick. And I don't know how you just don't put a buck on Phil Mickelson. I mean, the guy was second last year. Uh, and uh, he just, he, this is it. This is, uh, you know, I'm sure, I know everybody thinks of, of the Masters and they think of Tiger, but... Uh, I kind of think of Phil. I mean, you know, if Phil had Tiger's uh, game, I actually think Phil would have won here eight times. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, what do you think, Jan, about any uh, long shots, really deep long shots uh, that uh, we should keep an eye on? Oh, I don't know. I, I think it depends. If, if it did start raining, then um, it might be a little different. But, you know, the golf course – suits what we've just been to. I don't see anyone there that I would even think about. I don't, th- I don't think Justin Rose hits it far enough. 
even as firm as it is, I, I just can't see anyone there that I would that I would even want to put any money on. Okay, Jared. Yeah, I, look, I'm a Jan. I'm not. I'm not betting any of these guys. The, the Masters has never been. Well, I guess Schwartzel won at 100 to one, whenever that was, 2010 or 12, whenever that was, 2011. Otherwise, though, it's like it's guys 50 to one or lower that win this thing. So I, I'm not betting any of these guys to win. I do like for top 20 bets, maybe. I think Jaeger is a pretty good fit at Augusta, obviously coming off his, his first win. He's a long hitter. He's gained a lot of distance. So I think he could be a good fit here. I think um, Chris Kirk has some good history here. I think he's someone to consider. Uh, Taylor Moore has got, again, these are more like top 20 plays. Guys I'm considering playing on DraftKings if you're doing that this week. Um, I'm not betting any of these guys to win. Yeah. Uh, again, yeah. It's like uh, normally on, an, on a week we'd have like 10 guys that we would think, okay, then maybe, but it's like, one, Not here. two, Not here, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Gary Woodland was 14th last year, and he is coming off his best uh, performance of the year, right? A couple weeks ago, you mentioned. Uh, yes, Jared? his yeah. I'm, I'm pulling back up. His irons were unbelievable. At um, he, yeah, Houston Open, he gained 8.8 strokes on approach. That was the third best approach week of his entire career. Yeah, so, so that's, that's wow. definitely encouraging. Encouraging going forward. You know, obviously not for this week, but. As we get into some, uh, other might be a good one for next stuff. week because it's pretty tight. I mean, I keep Corey Connors or somebody for uh, Danny McCarthy for next week because it's so tight. But uh, yeah. um, you know, I, and he's such a Gary Woodland's such a great player. Everybody, I mean, person. Everybody likes him. He's got his kids, and he's just you know, I mean, you saw him at Valspar when I interviewed him. He's just really, really genuinely a nice person. All right, so now let's wrap up with one and done. And uh, what what are you uh, what, what's your finalists? Who are your finalists, Jared, for one and done this week? Yeah, so this is tricky because the, the obvious move is to use live guys because there's only the four tournaments you can use them. Now they're also going to be super popular. I think I think Rom will easily be the most popular play this week. I think Brooks is going to get some ownership. I'm not going to use him. So to, I, I'm I'm basically down to two guys this week. It's do I want to just play the popular Rom or I might go Hideki because again I do think it's just you know everything lines up for Hideki to play well so those are the two guys I'm considering Rom and Matsuyama okay uh, Jan who are you thinking about for one and done well I'm definitely gonna do Rom because you know I'm doing I'm gonna even though I don't like ever doing defending people because they they've got too much stuff to do but this week there's so much anyway I mean the, especially the media here it's ridiculous but because of the live thing, he doesn't seem to have as much to do and you don't have as much social stuff at this event to do. So it's the same for everybody. Any defending champion has the Tuesday dinner. So I think, um, and the Wednesday if they want to play and I, and I, and you know, Ram will play in that little Wednesday thing. So I, I'm going to probably go with Ram. I mean, I, I usually change it the last minute and mm -hmm. I, I mean, I want to go with Scheffler because I think this is his last chance for a few weeks. But I'm still going to go with a live player. So I think I'm going with Rom. All right. Yeah, if I was going to go with a live, a live player, I would go with Cam Smith, uh, even though he's having the uh, illness. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I still have four, four on my list. Scheffler, Clark, Matsuyama, and Spieth. So those are my four that I'm still thinking about. Probably going to go with Scheffler. Um, because I, 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 I'm not going to want to spend a lot of money on him. So I figured, well, let me just have him on one and done. So if he wins, I got him, uh, at least somehow. Um, but, uh, well, I'm in, I'm in two, so, but I'm thinking of doing Wyndham for the other one. Which one? Oh, uh, oh, you got the two contests. You, you're in two of them. Okay. So yeah, so pretty much. And, um, and who, who do you like? If you had to just pick one player, not named Scotty Scheffler to win this week, Jan, who would it be? John Rahm. John Rahm. Wow. Back to back green jackets. Imagine that. Yep. And your favorite long shot? Well, I think it's, no, um, it's either the gala or the gala. Yeah. The gala is the, and who's your, and your favorite long shot is obviously the gala, Jared. And you're not going to put any money. You're not even going to think of anybody outside of 50 to 1, Jared? Uh, no, I mean, I'm not going to bet anyone outside of 51. I do like Shane Lowry, though, um, who I know is 60. I think, you know, if you if you wanted another long shot behind uh, Sahith, I would go with Shane Lowry. 
All right, so that's going to wrap it up.